Okay guys, we have a real fun project today. A couple of years ago, my lab, well, I came up with a new idea on how to make um, a, a superconducting cable that would bring microwave signals to our device at 20 millikelvin without adding much heat load. Uh, we call this a flax cable for a flexible coax. It essentially involves two sheets of niobium titanium foil that are crimped into round uh, shapes and then a wire with a Teflon insulation that runs through it. Um, we actually built these and published them, uh, and uh, you can see a picture over here of what they actually look like. Um, so these work well, and there's actually a company called Maybell Quantum that's commercializing these uh, cables for other people to use. Maybell has picked a slightly different trace width pitch, and um, it's not, and they're only using eight coaxes per cable, whereas the experiment we need to uh, upgrade Mac Prime has ten. Um, these 10 cables, net 10 coaxes in the cable. And so what we got to do is make our own. Um, we, we've done this before. Basically, we take these two pieces of uh, niobium titanium foil, we crimp them, and then we lay a wire in it, and then we spot weld all along the length. So we're going to try to upgrade the process. Um, in the past, we've um, done the crimping with music wire and a mold, and it didn't work that well. So what I did over the weekend was designed and built most of the parts for um, a roller. We're going to roll it through a big pasta maker and essentially use that in order to make um, the, the mold for our cables. We're also going to try to laser weld instead of spot weld. So we'll see how that goes. But the first thing is the spot welder. So um, I made almost all the parts except the rollers themselves. The rollers are 17-4 stainless. I wanted them to be really hard and they're a CNC lathe part. So I took them to the shop. The shop got them back to us. They look great, uh, but now we need to heat treat them. Okay, I had the machine shop make up these rollers for me. Uh, these are 17-4 stainless. Um, you can see they have some grooves on them. Uh, and so these, these fit together. The grooves uh, match, and that will roll the part out um, and, and make the shape we want. Um, but 17-4 stainless needs to be aged at 900 degrees, so we have to heat treat these. So we're going to heat treat now. First thing we got to do, though, is clean them off real good. Uh, so they don't get discolored too much. Just using a little acetone here to scrub them down, try to get them nice and clean. All right, to the machine shop. All right, here's our little heat treating oven. It's at a 482. Celsius, which is 900 degrees Fahrenheit, that is the temperature for our H900 heat treat that we're going to put on this 17.4. All right. All right, now we wait an hour and uh, we should be good to go. All right, it's been an hour. I'm gonna turn off the power. And now I just need this to air dry, air cool. You can see they've got, they've taken on a slight yellow tint. The slight yellow tint is what we expect from this material after the heat treating as the surface just oxidizes just a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the rollers. You see this nice color on them after heat treating. Uh, that's gonna be the, the main part. So then we have some screws, and then we have some machine pieces that I mostly made here at home, as well as some bearings that we're gonna need to use. So let's get all our parts out. All right, I've never assembled this before, so we will be uh, learning as we go. First part are these um, one and 1.125 inch uh, sealed bearings. These uh, bearings are gonna support these shafts uh, if they slip on. It slipped on before heat treat. We'll see how it goes now. This material is supposed to slightly shrink during heat treat, so there we go. 
All right, so these bearings should go into these machine grooves right here. There's one. And there's two. All right, we got our grooves. Now, the way this is gonna work is we've got these screws which will hold, will, will form a little, um, we're gonna form a uh, little rectangle with these um, pieces of aluminum. It's just half inch aluminum stock here with some holes machined into it. I did machine these myself, so we'll see how the uh, tolerances are. All right, so the way this is gonna to go together, we're gonna to have um, these pieces here, this roller is gonna go on the bottom, this roller is gonna go on the top, and this one will be on a shaft that moves up and down to, so that we can set it for different thickness materials. Um, so I guess we just have to start adding stuff. This end did not wanna get into this bearing. Let's see if, we, if it goes now. Uh, yeah, it's gonna go in. Maybe with a, a little tapping. Actually, we, uh, I forgot, we have thrust. Let me. All right, so uh, on each side to support these, I've got uh, the ball bearing for linear motion, and then I also got these thrust bearings. Um, so they would, um, uh, pr to protect against force going sideways. So these thrust bearings should just go on like this. The thrust bearing should assemble onto here, and then this should pop into the uh, into the uh, into the bigger bearing. Now this side is a little I'll call it a little recalcitrant. So I'm just going to go hit this side with a little bit of um, the uh, Scotch Bright wheel and uh, see if we can knock that uh, any burr down. All right, you can see now we've got this. Uh, I knocked that down a little bit. Let's see if we, if we can get it in now. Yeah. All right. It's not 100%. There we go. Okay, we're pretty much in now. Okay, so that's the lower one. Uh, the top one is a little different. So on this one, I've got these ball bearings to go on the shaft that's gonna go through the whole thing. So this one doesn't have its own shaft machined in. So the idea is that this shaft will go through the ball bearings and through this hole in the center and then just spin. Now, when I first tried this, this is a three, uh, three eighths inch shaft. These are three eighths inch bearings, but I was having a little trouble getting these on. So I'm gonna try to hit this with the scotch Bright, and then I might try to use a little lubrication to try to uh, help get um, these, this through. Very close. But, so I, I did put some uh, threaded holes in here. Um, maybe when I did that, it, it pushed open the, uh, it widened this a little bit. Uh, so let's see what happens if we put a little oil on here. See if it makes it easier. Certainly making it go on a little bit easier. Get out the persuader. The 
persuader has persuaded. All right. Okay. So we have that go through. Now we need thrust bearings on either side of this. And hopefully we'll be where we need to be. So that's gonna go like that. This is push. And we're real close here. Okay, so let's put on the, uh, the top and sides. This might actually come together. We'll see how it works. All right, now I need this to come. Yep, so that's about even on both sides. All right, so now you can see we've got the roller and this roller can move ups and down. Now I got some shims to let me adjust the position laterally if I needed to. Um, and so now I need to check that and see how the positions are. I mean, I think they're, I mean, it looks mated to me. Okay. That looks pretty good. We might not need the shims. So now let's put on the last uh, stage here, which is these clamps, which clamp the height. These might be a little too long. Yeah. All right. Luckily I've got a bunch of these quarter 20 screws around. These are, um, quarter inch long, quarter twenties. Let's see. Okay. Now we need um, the arm to turn it. So I machine just got a part from McMaster and I put a little um, screw in there. Now I have a machine to flat on this. Um, if we need to, I'll just go and at the grinding wheel and, and take off um, and take off some uh, of the um, uh, f to make a flat if I need to. But we'll s just try it without first. Okay. So there we go. We got the roller. You can see this rolling mill now may work. Okay. So let's try to roll something. Okay, so here I've got some uh, one thousandth of an inch copper foil. I'm gonna use these uh, off cuts to try to set the height by sticking it uh, in, the, uh, in the parts of the rollers where there's no, um, uh, where there's no grooves uh, to try to make it work. Let's see if this'll, if this'll work. This is all new approach here, so we don't know if it'll work. I actually made a little outfeed table for this thing where to feed the material in and out, but I didn't build it. Wanted to see if we had anything working at all before we tried that. All right, so now I'm pressing down on the roller and I'm gonna try to tighten this. I gotta... All right, so... We've just got it set. I can spin it. The top one's not spinning. The top one's locked in place for some reason. Why is the top one not spinning? The whole point of these bushings was to keep the top roller 
able to spin, which it's not doing. Okay, now that I've got it loosened, let's play around with it. Yeah, so it's spinning now. Let's see if I tighten it up a bit, it stops spinning. So it must be buying, I think what's happening is the, um, I think what's happening is the, the thrust washer is binding up against one of the other washers, uh, against maybe the ball bearing and keep keeping it from spinning. So uh, I'm gonna take, check that in a minute, but first let's just try to take an off cut of copper and see if we can get it uh, to roll, see what happens. Okay, I don't think we are aligned well enough. All right, I think we gotta do some more alignment of the top and the bottom rollers to make this work. So let me unscrew these. All right, so I bought these shims. Uh, these are um, one thousandth of an inch thick. So we can, I can use these shims to uh, move the rollers uh, if, if needed. Um, so I think I'm going to start experimenting with that, trying to get a, a tighter fit. Okay, after a little bit of playing around with alignment, I got it pretty good. The, the main problem I have is that if I, if I tighten these screws, even if I have this top piece, this top roller binds up and, uh, and that's not what we want. So I think I may have to redesign this so that the, um, uh, so that I think the thrust washers are impinging on the, the central shaft. So I think that's a minor change, but let's give this a go um, with this alignment with just a piece of this copper foil and see what we get out of it. So I'm gonna line this up with the edge and I'm gonna start putting it through. All right, that changed it significantly. We, um, we put in some uh, divots. We'll have to check under the microscope to see how deep they are. And it, it definitely stiffened up the whole thing. It, it went from, uh, the, these, are, these are work hardening, I think probably the areas where we're, we're working. So I think the general principle is sound. Now we need to do a couple things. My, my first thought is um, I wanna redesign the mechanism that, um, uh, that, that holds this so that when we tighten it, this, this can still spin freely. And then I also think we need downward press. I was going to lock it in place, but I don't, I'm now thinking that won't work. So I'm thinking I should have some like big springs that are pushing down on this roller um, and maybe with a screw in it so we can adjust the pressure uh, that the springs are putting on um, and to get the right, the divot that we want. So uh, I think that means some more machining. So We'll make this part one of the video. Um, we're still, we are, we're working, we're assembled, but I think with a little work to the top roller, we can probably be where we need to go. All right, thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next one.